Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I thought I would share my thoughts on whether you should study photography at university in 2021. Now, I'm gonna make the assumption that university and schools are all open by then. Otherwise, if it's online study, I definitely wouldn't recommend it at all. So I have some key points, pros and cons, and overall just personal subjective opinions that hopefully should give you a better idea of whether studying photography is a good idea for you. So we'll leave some timestamps in the description below. That way, if you just wanna know something specific, you can just click on one of those and it'll take you right to it. Now, I'm obviously not a careers advisor, but I'm just about to graduate with my bachelor's in photography. So I'd say I have a fair case on this topic and have some arguments either for or against on whether you should study at a higher level. Now, I'm gonna be speaking from the perspective of the Australian university system. I know the US system is a little bit different, but I'm sure that these same points can be applied somewhat. I remember when I was thinking about studying photography, I would go to these university-run open days, and what I found was I'd go there and I'd listen to this presentation, and they would kind of just tell you the best parts about the course, and I never really found I had a full idea of what to expect. So in this video, I thought it'd be a good idea for me to share some of the good things and bad things. That way it's a bit more of a grounded discussion and you might have a better idea of what to expect if you are thinking about going down this path. So if this video is helpful and you wanna see more of my stuff, then please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, then leave them in the comments down below. So first things first, you obviously don't need to study photography in order to be a photographer. I think that's been proved time and time again, but I thought I would just get that out of the way first. But in saying that, studying photography full-time will allow you to give it a lot more attention, which will inevitably improve your skills as a photographer. So for example, the BA in Australia is three years and the diploma is two years. So if I had picked a degree like marketing or business, then photography probably just would have been sidelined and my growth would have been slowed immensely. However, in saying that, I know people that find that a little bit too much and they just prefer it as an outlet, which is completely fair enough, but for me, all I've ever wanted was just to focus purely on photography and having the option to study it really ticks that box. Pretty much all day and every day for the last four years, I've been able to consume myself with photography, which is exactly what I've always wanted. So this leads me onto my next point, which is meeting like-minded people, which I believe is probably one of the most important reasons to study photography at a university level, not just for the present, but also for the future as well. It is worth mentioning that it is doable in the outside world, but it just requires a lot more reaching out, which might not be for some people. So in my case, the course is quite small, so it is pretty easy to meet people and create some meaningful relationships that will hopefully last a lifetime. My friends and I are always sharing thoughts and ideas towards each other's work, which creates a really safe yet critical environment to get feedback about your own work. And the best part is because you are together pretty much on a daily basis for at least three years, you really get to know the strengths and weaknesses of your peers and you're able to see their progression from day one. So I guess one of the questions I had when I was thinking about studying photography is, what would you learn? Is it more theory or is it more hands-on practical stuff? And three years in, I can confidently say it's a bit of both. I'm gonna start with the technical side first. And honestly, technical side, it's not that great. There are so many things that should be covered, but what I've found is they cover things that just come from the textbook. So a lot of things we learn aren't even really relevant to the industry today, which is pretty disappointing. And I can see the frustration of the teachers who actually wanna teach something that they feel passionately about, but they're just held back by the criteria of the university for whatever reason. I won't get too specific as it's dependent place to place, but the main technical side of things normally revolves around lighting and post-production as well. And to be honest, after three years, I'm probably not as confident as I should be with lighting, which is pretty disappointing considering all the work that's been put into it. And that's not for the lack of trying. I just find the way it's set up, it's not overly inspiring or motivating. So to be honest, I haven't really got much out of that. I've actually learnt more watching YouTube videos than I have going to university in this regard, which I guess says something about the education quality and just how good this platform can be. In terms of post-production as well, I always find we learn the most unnecessary ways of doing things when we could be learning something a lot easier and a lot more modern, but we're taught these old ways that were good 15, 20 years ago, but no longer in line with what we're doing today. I think this could be teacher dependent, but I still think it's a point that needs to be raised. This is a complaint that seems to be echoed elsewhere where you have assignments you don't really wanna do and they're not even relevant to your own practice, but for the sake of the criteria, you have to do them. So that does feel like a bit of a waste sometimes, but I guess that's kind of fair enough because at the end of the day, it is a university degree and you do have to follow some kind of a structure. But at the end of the day, a lot of people probably couldn't care less about the technical side of stuff because it is kind of a general thing. You know, you can only really learn so much about how to use a camera, the rest is about how you take your own ideas and develop them into a project. So yeah, learning the kind of camera stuff and the lighting stuff, it, I guess it does kind of 
reach a certain point and then you have to really learn it for yourself. But I still think it's an obligation of the uni to teach this stuff at a high standard and it's still really important. In terms of the theory side, this obviously depends on what country you're from because I know in Australia it's a lot more laid back compared to some of the unis in the UK where they're a lot more kind of writing based but from what I've done you know, it's only a few essays every semester, which isn't too hard. You might have to do a few text responses, which isn't even that bad. I've actually found that writing about my work is a lot more valuable than I once thought. I think it's a really good way to flesh out your ideas a little bit more, and it gives you a better idea of what your own project is about, and you'll be able to take those ideas and hopefully articulate them to other people a little bit better. But if this doesn't sound like a thing, it is actually kind of specific to the bachelor degree, then the diploma degree is a lot more hands-on and practical, so that might be a better option for you. So my next point isn't a downside as such, but it's just something to be aware of, and that is that the teachers that are there, not all of them are gonna be on your side and be super supportive of the work you are doing. There definitely is some kind of gatekeeper attitude, which to be honest is probably expected at any kind of academic institution or any degree for that matter. This was so frustrating for me because the reason I went to university was to build some of these mentor relationships with my teachers and some of them it seems are purely there for their own image and their own ego, which is pretty disappointing. I think this is super important to know because people like this exist and you'll probably come across them. And I know people personally that have dropped out due to this reason, which is pretty disappointing on behalf of the university. But in saying that, it does only reflect a small percentage of the teachers at university. And to be honest, most of them are incredible educators who really go out of the way and ensure you get the best outcome possible. So if you wanna do project work, this is where I think studying at university is a lot more advantageous compared to just doing it on your own terms. So every semester, you do work on a photo project of some kind whether you're into fashion, documentary, you can really choose any kind of topic and explore it at your own pace. And then each week you might present a few images to the class of some work in progress that you've been doing. And then this way you present your work, you get some feedback, you might get pointed into the direction of other photographers who are working in a similar field. This is a really good way to expand your own knowledge and also improve some of the ideas that could be incorporated into your project. This is a practice that's been super helpful to me and I think it's a lot harder to find in the outside world. It's definitely out there. I know that our portfolio reviews, but most of the time you do have to pay for them and they're definitely not on a weekly basis like these work in progress sessions in the uni are. So onto my next point now. This isn't really a necessity, but I still think it's a good thing to at least be aware of if you are thinking about studying photography. So you kind of want to have a rough idea of the photographer you want to be in the future, or at least some of the ideas that you hope to explore over the next three or four years or so. Obviously you might not have an exact idea as that might be one of the reasons why you study, but if you do, then that's definitely a good thing to have. For example, if you purely just want to be a wedding or corporate photographer, then in my opinion, I think studying photography might be a bit of a waste of time. At the end of the day, it is an art degree, so we don't really focus on the business side of things, which I personally would like, but I guess that's just the way it is. I think there's one class that does focus on this somewhat, but even then it's optional and most people probably won't get the chance to do it. So if this is the pathway you wanna take as a commercial photographer, then I think it might just be best to jump into assisting, or even depending on your experience level, you might just get started in the business side of things straight away on your own terms. But if you are more focused on art-based practice like myself, then university will be a lot more appropriate and I think you'll really enjoy it. So you also might be thinking like, yeah, that sounds fun, but at the end, what jobs are out there? And to be honest, I don't really have an answer for that at this stage and probably won't for some time. But what I've realized, at least this last year, is no job is safe. And even with any degree, finding a job is always gonna be difficult. So I think it's always best to just do what you wanna do. And if it doesn't work out, then so be it. At least you gave it a go and in the future you're never going to have any of those what if thoughts. I think that was my main turning point was thinking that if it doesn't work out I'd much rather be in that position than not trying at all and regretting it later on. So make sure if you are thinking of studying photography you really have to give it everything and in the end it'll be a lot more rewarding. So a point I make a lot in my videos is the financial side of things which I think is really really important. So I won't give any exact figures because it will depend on your location and which university you decide to go to but what I've observed is the bachelor's in photography is a lot cheaper than the other degrees out there, which might be pretty reassuring if money is a big factor for you. So I guess that leads me on to my next point somewhat, and that is the money you pay does actually cover a lot of the resources that are available to you pretty much all the time. Once again, obviously depending on the school, you'll probably have access to scanners, printers, 
cameras, lenses, studios, and probably dark rooms as well. So I think that's like a complete package for any photographer. I personally don't take advantage of this enough. And I know once I graduate, I'm gonna regret it so hard, but it is nice knowing that the money you pay actually does go a long way. It's also a great way to get comfortable with the gear that's used in the industry, which you wouldn't really have access to otherwise, at least I didn't. So I think that's really beneficial. So in summary, the pros are you'll meet like-minded people, you'll be able to create support groups and hopefully develop connections that will last many, many years. It is pretty affordable, as I mentioned. It is one of the cheaper degrees out there and you're gonna have access to so many resources that you wouldn't really have access to otherwise. And the cons, the technical side of learning probably isn't too great and to be honest, you could probably learn similar if not better things on YouTube. There's not much of an emphasis on the business side of things, which is a bit disappointing, but that might not bother some people. And finally, the teaching staff might be a bit hit and miss depending on where you study. So I hope that gave you a better idea of whether studying photography at a university level is the right move for you. At the end of the day, it is such a personal decision and I think that you should only really worry about what you wanna do versus what everyone else is telling you to do. At least that's what I found with me. It's definitely not for everyone and alongside the pros, which are really good, there are a lot of frustrating elements which I wish didn't exist but I guess that's just the way it is sometimes. So once again if you have any questions then feel free to leave a comment down below or you can just send me a DM on Instagram at Ben Droger and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Anyways thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.